Hi, welcome back to the Hannah G Knits podcast. This is the second episode um, of my podcast. Thanks for watching. So last week I was, um, two weeks ago, I recorded my first episode and I was really excited by the response. Everyone was so kind um, and welcoming to me joining this new um, community for me. I haven't been on YouTube before, so everyone was so kind and left so many nice comments and um, shared, and that just means a lot. I don't know, I was surprised. I didn't know if anyone would watch, and um, yeah, thank you for watching. It means a lot. Um, I am back. I know I said monthly, but I honestly could not help myself. I really liked doing this. I liked um, interacting in the comments. It was fun. Um, for me to share my projects. So I'm back and I'm ready to share some more projects. So last week, I think I started with my finished objects. So I'm gonna start with those again. Um, I know I shared my camisole number four as a work in progress last time. Um, it was very in progress, but now it's finished except for the ends, which I still haven't woven in, but here it is. So I use BC Garn, Yarn Alba from um, Freeman's Creative, uh, a local yarn store in my area. And this is my favorite things knitwear, camisole number four. I'm sure um, you may be familiar with it. It's on Instagram a lot right now. That's where I get a lot of pattern inspiration. So yeah, I really like this a lot. I knit it pretty much exactly for the size one um, the way the pattern uh, reads. I knit it to the length recommended. Um, however, it might be a little short for me because I think my straps are shorter so that it sits like higher up, kind of like this. And in the pattern, it's lower. So it's a little bit longer, but it just reaches, like I pretty much only wear high-waisted pants. So it reaches my high-waisted pants, but I wasn't looking for like, um, super cropped or anything. So I have a little bit of yarn left. I used two, like a one and three quarters of a skein. Um, so I might go back and add more length, but I don't know. I really don't want to because I just want to wear this. Um, but I might take out the bottom and add more length. I'm not sure, but I will probably wear it with like a T underneath over a t-shirt. I have like this one, I have some white t-shirts. Um, I think it would just be really cute over with shorts or jeans. Um, but maybe I just got some black um, black jeans this last week or two. So I might wear it with that. I think that'd be cute for like a date night or something. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with it. I was skeptical of making a tank top um, knitted for summer and also skeptical of using 100% cotton yarn, but it's so soft. I think this yarn um, must be really nice. I don't know. Um, it's got certified GOTS, so um, I'll put it in the description if, if you're, that's something you're interested in. Um, yeah, but it felt like an affordable option for me. It's not a budget yarn or anything, but just based on how little I would need. And then look at this. I just love this texture. I love 2 by 2 Broken Rib. It's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, so... I just, I really like it. I like the increases. They look so nice and neat. This was fun to knit and it was about a week. I knit it um, while we were at the beach last week. Side note, that was so fun. My son is about 15 months old and last year we went to the beach and he did not like the um, <laughs> ocean. He did not like it, um, but that's okay. So this year he loved it. Like he could not get enough of it. Like we had a little kiddie pool and he sat in that for a while and then he realized the waves were there and he's not walking yet really well, but he took off. Like I was holding his little shoulders and he was like, gotta get to the waves. And then um, after they went back out, he was like, more, more waves, more waves. It was so cute. Um, anyway, that's not what you came for. You came for the knitting, so back to knitting. Um, 
Another finished object, finished object is my cumulus tee, um, which I lengthened the sleeves on. I don't think this was done last time. Yeah, two weeks ago, I don't think so. I finished it right before we went to the beach. Um, yeah, so I knit it, I cropped it a little bit. Let me stand up. I'm wearing sweatpants with it. <laughs> I cropped it here and you can see the nice I-cord edge. I-cord, I love the I-cord details. Um, I'm happy with the sleeve length. Um, it just makes it like I could wear it by itself, but I could also wear it over something like an actual like sweater versus a t-shirt. Um, so I'm really happy with, with the sleeve modifications that I made. I just continued the decreases and then, um, uh, yeah, as they were written in the pattern, but just for added length. So I used Knitting for Olive, Merino, Dusty Artichoke, and this is Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit, another really popular summer pattern. I haven't really branched out from <laughs> um, the more like uh, basic summer summer knits yet. I'm not a big summer knitter, so it's felt like a lot to me to make two garments this year so far. Um, yeah, okay. Um, another finished object. Okay, last week I offhand made a comment like, do I share all the finished objects I've ever made? for my first podcast. And someone kindly um, commented and said, actually, that's a great idea to share a few of your old projects so we can get to know you better. And I love that. Um, plus it gives me more content for my videos because my video last week was so short, so short, which is fine, but it was really short. So I'm gonna bring back some finished objects from the archives. If you have a request of something you want to see, um, feel free to drop it in the comments. If you see it on my feed and you want like an explanation of what it is or what size I knit, um, things like that, feel free. Uh, I love sharing my projects. In fact, I love this idea so much. So thank you to whoever suggested it. I can't remember your name, but that was very kind. Um, Okay, and so today from the archives, I mentioned that I have been trying to become a sock knitter. Sorry about all the notifications. My sister's texting me. Um, I've been trying to become a sock knitter in 2022. So I want to share all the socks I've made so far in 2022 um, for myself. From the archives, here are my socks. My January socks are these. Um, these are the Wisteria Bloom Socks by Amy Schur. I used Echo View Fiber Mill Lapidary, I believe that's what it's called. Um, I got for my birthday almost a year ago um, when I visited their mill. And um, I love this pattern. I slightly modified it because I wanted to be able to make two pairs. So the original sock has a much longer lace panel and um, I think that's the only modification I did uh, just because I wanted to be able to make two pairs. And it turned out good because I accidentally felted them by throwing them in the washing machine on accident. I know I shouldn't do that. I did not intend to, but it happened um, accidentally. So that was very devastating because these are the first pair of socks that I felt like really fit me. And I loved how they fit. Like I really loved them and they still fit well, but not as good as they did before I accidentally threw them in the washing machine. So I plan to remake them. I might even make the whole sock, but this is my first time doing this Pico edge and I think it's just so cute, so fun. I love like fun socks with unique things, not necessarily like a lot of lace, but just like something fun. So I love the rib and the Pico edge. So. It's not too late to join the Knit Diverse Knit Along, supporting, um, I can't remember, I believe it's Asian and Pacific Islanders, designers, yarn, like knitters, um, dyers, stitch marker makers, lots of different things. Um, so you can, can do these for your Knit Along entry. And then for February, I finished these in February. Started in January, finished in February. These are my, ooh, they look really good. So 
So these are my winter sun socks. I had so much fun making these. I did it as a test knit for Natasha of Northern Knits and Pearls, I believe. Knit and Pearl. Um, and wow, I loved making these. Look at the heel. That's so fun. So I used a Woolberry sock set that was gifted to me during a Winter Wishes sock set um, or sock swap. And um, so I, these were mailed to me very kindly. And um, it's something from Lord of the Rings. I can't remember. Um, something about an elephant. I, I'm not really sure, I don't remember. But I love the color. I know you're not really supposed to do like variegated with cables, but I feel like you can still see the cables pretty distinctly. Um, so I tested this pattern for Natasha. It was a lovely experience. She's so kind. Um, and I just love the details. The fit is amazing. I just was so happy with these as well. I'm surprised by how well my sock knitting has gone this year. I switched up. I used to use double pointed needles. I don't recommend that unless you just don't want to buy a new pair, which was where I was at. But I switched up to um, red lace needles by Chiago, Chiago, I'm not sure, for um, Magic Loop. And wow, it made all the difference. These socks knit up so fast, even though they're like full, full length. I do have small feet. I wear a size six, so that could be part of it. But okay. My third pair, January, February, March. Uh, my March pair was a, oh yeah, these, they're these. These are shorties, cute. Um, I love them. <laughs> this is a free pattern by Summer Lee Knits. It's the weekend shorty sock. Wow, these were so fast. I just kept them in the car for when I was like waiting for a Target drive up or um, my son fell asleep in the car. So this was like my sock or my car knitting um, for a while. So they didn't go that fast because um, I just had it in the car for driving, but they would have gone like so fast if I had not um, just had them in the car. So I used um, Undercover Otter is this and this one and this is a Sanis yarn yarn Sanis yarn um I don't remember it's their sock yarn but it's um doesn't have any nylon it's super wash but no nylon and this undercover otter my parents picked up in Amsterdam like five years ago and um, I sent them on a wild goose chase to Stephen and Penelope which I didn't really know at the time how big of a deal that yarn store is. Stephen West, all that. I had no idea. I just looked up yarn stores in Amsterdam. They were going. Um, I was starting to knit. I thought this would be so fun if they went to a yarn store. And they very kindly bought, brought me back um, two sock skeins. I had no idea at the time what I was doing. <laughs> so I just saved the yarn, which worked out great <laughs> because now I have these and I love them. They're so fun. I don't use a lot of variegated or speckled, not sure what this is, yarn, but for socks, I think it's perfect. They're just adorable and they fit really well too. Um, this part's a little loose. So I used a super stretchy cast on, but I don't think you have to do that um, because it only goes up to your ankle. So previously when I knit socks, um, it would be important for me to have a stretchy cast on so they could go over my calf. But when it's just my ankle, it's not really necessary, I realized. Um, that's the only thing I would change. But um, since they knit up so fast, yeah, I would knit these again for sure. So this was my March pair. I'm really happy with them as well. They're getting a lot of wear, so there's a little bit of um, felting in the heel. But that's okay. They're supposed to be worn, right? That's what I tell myself. <laughs> okay, um, so January, February, March, April... I knit a sample sock, so or two sample socks, it was a set. So I did not share those and I'm not going to share them, but um, the pattern came out recently and it's beautiful and it was fun to see my socks um, being used for the promotional content. Um, yeah, so May, yes, May I knit my sister's birthday socks. So Abby, if you're watching again, don't watch here. This is your sign. Okay, okay, 
Um, hopefully you've turned it off by now. So I did finish these up almost. I have one blocked, which I may have had last time. May have had it blocked. First one. And then second one, I have not put the heel in yet and it hasn't been blocked. So, yep. Um, I think this might be my first time fully knitting two socks with Afterthought heels. It was something I wanted to try um, for a while and I've done one sock, but I hadn't done a sock set. So um, that was fun. If you are considering that, um, I didn't put a string in like for um, unraveling, which would have been really smart. Instead, I'm gonna have to cut it, but it wasn't as scary as I thought. I used tiny scissors, like yarn snips. My mom got me a cute little heart heart shaped pair and um, I used my lace needles and it was surprisingly like not that bad. I, I was so worried about it. So I'm feeling a little confident, hopefully not too confident about putting these in. Um, but look at the difference the blocking makes. This one just looks so much better than this one. Um, but yeah. Okay, so yeah, these are for my sister for her birthday. It's on Sunday, so then I will gift these to her and she is dying to know. So I hope she likes them. I do think she'll wear them. She loves wool socks. She always tries to get me to wear mine more. She wears her knits all the time, which is awesome. Um, honestly, out of my family or people I've gifted knits, I feel like they wear them more than I do. Like my dad always has a knitted hat on. My mom, she always wears, like I made her a scarf and a headband. She wears those in the winter so often. Um, but yeah, I struggle to wear them, but I'm wearing one today. Um, so now onto my works in progress. I shared this last week, I'm still not done with it, um, but I brought it to the beach and then I ran out of yarn. So I did work on it while we were there and I was really happy with the progress I made. This is one of my designs coming up. Um, it's for release in the fall, so it will be a while, but I'm going to get it out to testers in a little bit after I send the pattern off to my tech editor. Carrie, thank you. If you're looking for tech editor, I'll put her in the comments or in the description so you can find her. She lives in my area, which is kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so this is it. I finished the bottom and I did like fold it up. If you can see that. And I love how it turned out. I think it's so cute. It's like a little sweatshirt, which is my goal. I want it to be like a sweatshirt wearable um, for kids. So I just need to finish the other sleeve, which shouldn't take long. I have more yarn. And I think I want to make this smaller, like perhaps um, decrease more stitches dramatically here at the end so that this, so that this is a little tighter because right now it's kind of loose. Um, or it's just like the same width. And I want it to be a little bit, I don't want it to be tight because I want you to be able to roll up the sleeves, you know, if you need to, but um, I want it to be a little bit tighter, I think. Yeah, so this is Ollie's Classic Crew. I knit it in Pearl Soho Goodwill. Um, I kind of love it. I can't wait to see him wearing it this fall, running around. Um, I think it's a good fall color. Goodwill has so many colors now, so you can't go wrong with that. I apologize for the work, I guess, going on in our backyard, if you can hear that. I'm not sure if it's picking it up, but it's kind of loud. Um, okay, my next work in progress. This has been in progress for so long. I've heard people say languishing whips. This is the definition. I can't remember when I started this or when I put it down. I think I probably just like needed the needle size for something else and I forgot. And every once in a while, like my mom or my sister will be like, what happened to that sweater? I don't think you finished it. That's true. I did not finish it. Um, this is it. It's not because I don't love it. I, I love it. I love the cables. I love how it looks. I've tried it on. It looks awesome. Um, it feels good. I thought it was scratchier, but it feels really good actually. I have to seam the collar down too, but um, this is Snow 
Snowy Forest. Um, I'll link the designer. I can't remember her name. Um, and so anyway, I'll put it in the description. So yes, I decided I'm going to finish this for the Knit Diverse Knit Along because you can enter works in progress or things you hadn't um, previously committed so or previously finished. So it's a perfect opportunity and the push I need to finish this because like, gosh, this yarn is so, the weight is so heavy. It should take no time. And I want to do it before it gets really, really hot here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I want to finish this. I do. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I waited so long for the pattern to come out. Um, it's from Lina magazine and, or it's in there. It's featured. So I had to wait, you know, for the exclusivity period to be over. And I waited and waited and waited and waited. And yeah, so then I got it when it came out. And then I did not finish it. I think I realized I couldn't finish it by like winter, like when it was really cold. And so I just kind of let it sit, but I'm excited to have it for the fall. I'm using Fisherman's Wool um, by Lion Brand and it's just 100% wool. Um, yeah, this is 465 yards. I actually think it might be discontinued, or at least this color is discontinued, brown heather. My mom found it at a thrift store, and there was like four of these in like a plastic bag, um, like sealed, you know, all of that, and totally untouched. So she got it for me a long time ago, and I've been wondering, like, what am I going to do with this? I have no idea. I want to save it, you know, for something good where I need a lot of yarn. So this is it. Um, this is my project I'm using, but I'm going to have a lot left. So I gave my sister the other two skeins or other one. I can't remember how much it was. Um, yeah, so I think she might make the same sweater or the Miles shirt jacket by Ozetta, which just came out. I saw someone I follow used. I believe she used this. So anyway, this is a work in progress and I'm hoping to finish it. And post a picture enter myself into the knit along because the prizes look awesome if you haven't seen them um yeah you should check them out very cool i think those are the only works in progress i have surprisingly um let me know if you have a favorite i should cast on <laughs> um so my acquisitions i do have some acquisitions today we went to a local yarn store on sunday um, my husband took me to celebrate Mother's Day, which was very kind to do something that I enjoy. We had just gotten back from the beach the day before, so we tried to keep it low key. And so we went to Freeman Creative. Um, and before that, it's right across from a delicious coffee shop that we both love so much. And we went a lot in college and we just go a lot in general. And they have churros at this location. So we went and got churros and Ollie, my son, tried a churro for the first time. He really liked the sugar that was on it. <laughs> um, I got a hot chocolate and um, then we went over to um, Freeman's Creative. If you're local to like the Triangle area, it's in the Lakewood Shopping Center in Durham by the Scrap Exchange. Um, definitely worth, worth a visit. So I could, did get some yarn and um, Yes, the first thing I picked out was for a winter design, probably like mid-winter release, like December, January, that kind of thing. Um, but I want to make a color work sweater, but simple, not something very tedious, um, two colors. So these are the colors. I Oh, there's one more, but these are the colors that I picked. This one kind of came apart. <laughs> Um, this is Cascade 220 Superwash Sport. Um, yeah, I really wanted this like ice blue. And I think Sport is a nice weight for color work because you can still get the definition that you might find from fingering weight and lots of repeats and all of that. But it doesn't take quite as long and it's not quite as strenuous. So uh, when you're knitting for kids, it can be mentally can be difficult to finish a project 
If you're concerned about your child outgrowing it or you're concerned about them spilling on it or things like that. So I like to use maybe heavier weighted yarns um, for more difficult projects, I guess. Um, whether that's for a design or for um, like something I'm just making Ollie. So this is Sport, which I feel like is a nice in-between um, and it feels so good. I know it's super wash, not everyone's favorite. I understand for sure why you may not choose to use it. For me, it feels sturdier for Ollie's use. Um, I know him, he's not, I mean, he's a kid, right? I wanted it to be like, at least maybe more sturdier, more washable um, for his wear, but you know, that's a choice for my family. You make, make that choice for your family. So Superwash Sport by Cascade Yarns. And I wanted this cause I wanted it to be like icicle, snowflake, winter. Um, so I like these these colors together. And the second yarn or the second batch of yarn that I got on Sunday. This is pretty. It's a uh, Lang Yarns Surrey Alpaca. Um, I recently used some Surrey Alpaca and wow, it is so fluffy. Um, I like mohair. Surrey seems fluffier to me. I don't know. Let me know. Do you like mohair or do you like Surrey? I, or do you use both? I'm just not sure. But I got this and it's my first time using it. First time using Lang Yarns actually. Um, but I got it to match some yarn I picked up recently in Charlottesville because my husband is so kind and he's like, you have to buy something, you have to, I'm buying it for you, it's a gift, it's Mother's Day, um, or we're on a trip, I want you to remember the trip with this yarn, things like that, very kind. So um, I got this to match the yarn I got in Charlottesville at U Fibers. So let me get that. So I picked up some Knitting for Olive Merino. This is Plum Rose. It's a little dark in here, so I don't think this light is quite right. But I got them to go together now because after knitting this, I didn't really want to knit another fingering weight sweater right away. So I thought if I held it with this Surrey, it would be perfect. Be heavier weight. I don't know what that is. Maybe DK um, Sport. I don't know. So I'm excited. They don't match exactly. I didn't have them with me when I picked them out, but I think I have almost a sweater's quantity. I always go for almost a sweater's quantity. Probably should have bought one more, but the great thing is this is widely available right now. And the color is too. I don't think it's going to get discontinued. And same with this one. So I don't know what I'm going to make. Do you have any patterns that you like that are maybe DK, sport DK, um, probably a full sweater, like either a cardigan or a pullover. I kind of like the style of maybe a sweater number 18. I know that's worsted, so I don't know if it would work. Um, the Billy Pullover by Sari Nordland. I've thought about that. That would be so good in this color. Maybe that one, I'm not sure. That's been on my list for a while. Um, but it looks like an undertaking. I love a cabled sweater. I do. I just have to be in the right mindset. I love cables though. And I saw it has cabled raglan seams, which um, my sweater I put out last month also has that. So I'm like, I won't have to learn that because I put it in a pattern last month and released it. So at least I know how to do that already. So I don't know. This is like my go-to color, even though it's kind of not my best color. I just love it. So yeah acquisitions. Oh, I have one more acquisition. Now this isn't really an acquisition because I never bought it and I did not buy it recently or it was not purchased for me recently, but this yarn, actually my parents picked up when they were in Amsterdam. So they got me this as well. This is Nettle. Um, I don't remember Nettle sock yarn also from Stephen and Penelope. So I had made one and a half pair of socks and I ran out of yarn like two years ago, two years ago. So this has just been sitting in a project bag for two years in socks 
that were not going to be finished because I don't have another skein of this. And so part of one of my goals um, in mindfully purchasing yarn this year is to reuse yarn that is not being used well in my stash or in my closet. So I got some. Uh, I unraveled the socks. It was a little painful. Um, I did follow a tutorial. I don't remember it right now. So I'll try and link it in the notes. So I unraveled it. I put it on my yarn swift. So it was going around and around and I had this on there. And I tied it like up at the top and I honestly did not believe it, but I did it. So I soaked it with wool wash and warm-ish water in a bin for like 30 minutes, a long time. It felt like a long time to me. And when it came out, it was perfect. Like I thought it was gonna be all scrunched up tight and crunchy the way it had been because the socks were um, like really tight sort of faux cables and they'd been like that for two years. But look, absolutely amazing. I was shocked, absolutely shocked. It turned out perfect. So I think I'm gonna use this for my July socks. My yeah, my June socks will be another gift, but my July socks will be for me, is my intention. So I think I'm going to use this. I might join the shop Knitting Nelly Knit Along or Knitting Nelly Knit Along um, to support um, Shop Knitting Nelly. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can use her pattern. She has a lot of sock patterns. Um, and there's a lot of great prizes, but it's all to support her because she's been having some health issues and a difficult time this year. So I want to join that knit along as well. Lots of great knit alongs. Um, and why not join them, right? I was going to knit socks anyway. It's for a great cause. Um, so yes, this is nettle sock yarn. I believe it's still available. I think that this might be more available in Europe. So if you're watching from there, let me know because I love this. It's supposed to be really strong because it's made with nettles instead of nylon, I believe. So a great alternative if you're not into using nylon in your sock yarn. Um, yeah, I don't have the label. I mean, I do have the label, but I don't have it with me. Um, I do tend to keep all my labels. Speaking of, my sister mentioned the other day how funny it would be if I just brought them on here and showed you all of the labels I've ever used for my yarn or for my knitting. Let me know if you'd like to see that or if you also keep all of your yarn labels obsessively like I do. Like even if it's like six skeins, like if I used all of these that I bought, I would still keep every single label because I wanna know how many I used and I'm not gonna write it down because I just, it's easier to just keep the label for me. So I do keep all of those in a little bin, probably for the last like two years. Um, let me know if you wanna see that. And I can just like pull one out and read a yarn of the day or something, I don't know. Um, I have a lot of like hidden knitting things, like my yarn closet, I have a whole closet dedicated, which I think I'm really lucky. A lot of people struggle to put their yarn somewhere, but. I have like a little closet in our basement that I use to store my yarn. Um, yeah, this is just fun. I like talking about my knitting stuff, my yarn closet, my yarn label obsession, um, finding new things to do with with yarn that maybe isn't being purposed well in your in your stash or your closet. Um, I do want to buy more of this if I can find a retailer in the U.S. because I really like it, and it's just slightly heathered. And I think that would be really cute in a sweater, but I just have this one, so I don't know. Anyway, I think that's all I have today. I did my finished objects, my whips, acquisitions. Um, thanks for joining me. I really enjoyed reading your comments and commenting back. I can't believe it's already been two weeks since my last podcast. This is so fun. I can't wait to watch your podcast because that's what I do on the weekends. I just love to watch a good knitting podcast. 
I am excited um, to connect with you. And I can't wait for a month or two weeks, depending on how it goes. I wanted to share my, my finished objects and things like that. So thanks for watching. I can't wait for episode three. Um, yeah, have a great, a great weekend.